Welcome to the Keystone Project Podcast, a place where we discuss kingdom stories, core values, and the Great Commission. Hey there, we just want to welcome you to the Keystone Project Podcast. If you are a new listener, welcome to our show. And if you're a returning listener, welcome back. Super excited to have you here. I'm here with my brother, James Green, and also here with our dad, Richard Green, who is the president of the Keystone Project and has been in ministry for 40 years uh, on the mission field and uh, leading this organization, the Keystone Project. Super excited to have him here. Um, and James is going to introduce our topic. Yeah, hi, it's good to be here. It's great to have um, dad here again. And I know, dad, you've uh, been preaching, teaching the good news um, for many, many years, training a lot of pastors and leaders. And one of the most significant, I think, lessons that you do is teaching them what the gospel is mm. and just communicating that to them, making sure they understand what it is. Because a lot of times I think the gospel that we're preaching today isn't exactly the gospel that Jesus and his disciples preached. And so, yeah, today we wanted to talk about um, what that gospel is and, yeah, get your get your wisdom and your, your insight on that. Yeah, it's really good to be with you and uh, with all of our listeners. Uh, and obviously, that's a very important uh, question. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Why, uh, why is it important? Are we preaching the gospel the way that it was preached in the scriptures? Uh, I think those are all relevant questions for us to consider. I know that Jesus told us that when the end would come, that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the and the whole world is a testimony to all the nations, and then, and then the end will come. And so uh, that really kind of caught me, this gospel. and Of what gospel? The gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I really, I was really praying, what is the gospel of the kingdom? It just, it just caught me enough to get me to be thinking about it. And I was thinking about it also in terms of the kind of faith that we see being promoted in the church today. Hmm. And I think there is a deficiency in the level of faith that we have. If we compare the faith that we have uh, in, the, in the church today to the faith that we see expressed uh, in the Gospels and in the Book of Acts and through the epistles, uh, different kind. Uh, yeah. I, think, uh, I think that kind of faith it seemed to produce a different lifestyle, mm. one of uh, redemptive sacrifice and uh, mission. Uh, there were also signs and wonders that, that were indisputable and that caused a reaction of astonishment and awe amongst those who, who witnessed those things. And, uh, and I'm not sure that our faith today, uh, and I'm speaking in generalizations. So this, sure. you yeah. know, this yeah. is if the shoe doesn't fit, don't wear it. Uh, you know, gotcha. eat the meat, yeah. leave the bones. But I think the kind of uh, faith that we are seeing produced today amongst Christians is a bit more consumeristic. It's a little bit more um, prosperity centered. It's therapeutic, uh, um, and it doesn't seem to be producing the same level of commitment and dedication uh, in as much as we would like to see. And so sometimes that the gospel that's preached is kind of laced with, you know, what can Jesus do for me kind yeah. of thing. It's more about, you know, me, 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 that consumeristic thing you're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's focused on ourselves. Um, Jesus fixing my problems, uh, Jesus fixing my marriage, helping me with my addictions, Jesus yeah. delivering me, making me happier. And so it becomes a, a, a form of therapy for us. Yeah. And, uh, and that doesn't necessarily produce a, a world-changing faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, in that early church, they had a world-changing faith. They changed yeah. the world. They brought half of the Roman Empire to their knees before Christ within a couple of hundred years without any means to mass produce the gospel. And when they were facing significant opposition, too, oh, it wasn't yeah. easy. <laughs> To profess Christianity. Oh, yeah. It was illegal in many, many places. And it meant that they were going to lose everything. And many of of the early Christians had the attitude that the moment of true discipleship was only came at the moment of martyrdom. Which is crazy. Wow. Yeah. And that's that's the kind of faith that that they had. And so they were they weren't looking for a better life in this world. 
They were they were looking to advance the kingdom of God with the knowledge that uh, that that uh, as they did so, yeah, that that God's purposes would be fulfilled in and through them. So, yeah. So when we think about the gospel, the gospel obviously is good news. That's what the word gospel means, and and it's the good news of the kingdom of God. And when we think about the kingdom of God, we're thinking about the rule of God in our lives. And so that begs the question, how does God rule? Mm -hmm. Uh, Does he rule by a set of laws? And many uh, people outside Christianity and even inside Christianity, they believe that that Christians are bound by all these rules and regulations and laws. But that's not the kind of rule that we're talking about here. We're talking about a defining principle and quality that motivates us Mm -hmm. and uh, that causes us to uh, develop core values that are are reflective of what God loves. And that is going to produce these kingdom uh, choices in our lives, which will produce kingdom behavior patterns and and then thus the the culture of the kingdom of God. So um, which is which is sorry, like wild. Just because, like most people I talk to, when you when you when you're talking about the kingdom of God, their concept of the kingdom of God is is heaven. Yeah, that's the first <laughs> right. that's the first place they go to. They're not even thinking at all about any of that. Right, and we need but, to clarify something too as we're talking about this, because in the Gospel of Matthew, the kingdom of God is referred to as the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, and that is because Matthew's audience is believed to have been uh, Jews that yeah. he was writing to religious Jews. And so they rarely would use the name of God. And even to this day, religious Jews, they, they rarely use the name of God. They will, they will not spell it all out. Yeah. Um, and they don't want to take the Lord's name in vain. Um, and so, but if you, if you study the same verses in Matthew that appear in the other Gospels, it, you can see that the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God in the other? And it's like interchangeable. Uh, God's, it's the interchangeable. Yeah. The verses yeah. are so. Um, so there isn't like a kingdom of heaven and then a. a, a kingdom it's not like of there's God. two it's different, the different separate gospel. things. Yeah. Yeah, and I think another thing that we need to realize too, and we're talking about um, heaven being the goal of the of the gospel, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment, is that we know from the book of Revelation that the heavens and the earth are going to burn away. Yeah. Hmm. So is the promise of the gospel something that isn't eternal? Yeah, that's a good point. And, and so it's just something for us to think about. You know, I know Paul said, I'm not ashamed of, of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And, and I know that, that when I came to Christ in my personal testimony, uh, I was in college. I had grown up as a Roman Catholic and very devout in that, always had a, a sense and awareness of God, but didn't really have a personal knowledge or relationship with him, really wondered, is God real? Mm-hmm. And and I mean, I would think about that all the time. And so I was really searching for God. Yeah. So I wasn't searching for anything else. And when I came to Christ, I came to Christ reading Psalm 22, yeah. which is a, a very detailed prophetic description of Jesus yeah. being crucified, and um, and and I could see as I read this, it was a, written a thousand years before the birth of Christ. I could see that Jesus could not have orchestrated those things from the cross, and so that this was this was God that was the Father that was orchestrating it. And so in that moment, I wasn't searching for salvation. I wasn't looking for heaven. I was looking for God. Yeah. And um, and I was just tremendously transformed when I read that. And I, I, I believed in God. Yeah, I yeah. believed in this God who's in control of all things. And the power of the gospel there for me was very, very transformational. Yeah. Uh, and such that I've never really looked back. And and without even knowing all of the details, I know that the night that I came to Christ, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the next day, I was telling everyone about Christ. So I think when we look at the gospel, the essence of the gospel message is that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. Paul says that this was according to the scriptures. So this was planned. 
Mm-hmm. This was divinely orchestrated and that he arose from the dead on the third day. And uh, in the resurrection, of course, he destroyed sin and death and the grave and uh, just the, removed and destroyed the ruling power of the curse, setting all who believe free. And so the gospel is good news to proclaim that that freedom, that yeah. that liberty that we now have uh, over these things. So, and uh, you know, but the gospel also is a mystery. He said, "We speak uh, God's wisdom in a mystery," and he says that it is the the hidden wisdom which God uh, uh, predestined before the ages to our glory. And so this gospel is something that was a it's it was predetermined it was mm-hmm. predestined by God it, it it wasn't just a course mid course correction mm. you know in the sinful uh, affairs of men but it was predetermined by God and so we know that it's 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 sure that it's it's God's plan and that we can trust in this gospel it's a fact of history. Hmm. Again, it's not a theory. It's not a philosophy. It's not therapy. It's a fact of history. It's based on historical events that have that have happened and that cannot be undone. And so we can stand sure uh, in in believing in the gospel and knowing that it is true and that it has a power to save us. So I think I think the big distinction that I that I discovered and I'm not the only one that's discovered this, I'm sure. But as I studied the scriptures in searching this question out about what is the gospel of the kingdom, are we preaching the gospel uh, in the same way that it was preached in the New Testament? So I went to the New Testament and I, I studied every instance in which uh, the kingdom of God was being proclaimed. Mm-hmm. And and I discovered that in every single place that uh, that we see it being preached, that um, the promise of the gospel was not heaven. It never really mentions heaven. In fact, there's only one verse in the New Testament where uh, heaven and the gospel are linked, and that's from Colossians. Hmm. And uh, so it's not wrong. To tell sure, people yeah. about heaven. Mm-hmm. I want to make that clear. I yeah. believe in heaven. And it's not wrong to, to, to tell people about heaven. But I think we need to think about the fact that um, as you look at the presentation and proclamation of the gospel in the New Testament, John the Baptist, as he was preaching, he preached the kingdom of God. He preached yeah. the coming of the Messiah. He never mentions heaven to the people. He's not mm-hmm. telling them how to go to heaven. Yeah. When uh, Nicodemus comes to Jesus, what an opportunity for him to tell him how to go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. But he never mentions heaven. He talks to him and says that you need to be born again of the spirit. When he goes to the woman at the well, again, he doesn't tell her how to get to heaven. He says that, uh, that if, she knew the, if she knew the gift of God and who it is who asks her for a drink, yeah. She would have asked of him, and he would have given her living waters, and we know those living waters are the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so yeah. he never mentions heaven to her. Mm-hmm. And again, as we as we follow her through in John 7 at the, the Feast of Tabernacles, um, uh, Jesus stands up, and the city's filled with pilgrims from all over the world, and they're celebrating this great, joyful feast. And And in the midst of the feast, he stands up and he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, if he who is thirsty, let him come unto me, and out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And John inserts in his gospel, this he spoke of the Spirit, Mm -hmm. who was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so, what an opportunity. He's got a huge crowd there. Why not tell them how to get to heaven? Hmm. That's what we would do. Yeah. Uh, we would yeah. be telling them how to avoid hell and how to get to heaven. He's telling them how they can receive the Holy Spirit. Again, Peter on the day of Pentecost, as he responds to the questions of the people, he doesn't tell them how to get to heaven. He doesn't even mention heaven to them. He says to them that if they repent and are baptized for the, for the forgiveness of their sins in the name of Christ, then they too shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
And, and again, Stephen and, and Philip, uh, Ananias, when he comes to Saul, uh, as he sees Jesus on the road to Damascus, Philip, uh, even with the Samaritans and the Ethiopian eunuch, there's no record of them preaching heaven to any of those gospel, people. And promising heaven. Right. And so it doesn't mean that he, they didn't mention heaven. Yeah, I, I want to be clear about yeah. that. Yeah. But if that is the message of the gospel, and we're seeing them preach the gospel, why is it that the abundance of these passages are really uh, pointing to the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And the same thing when uh, Peter um, went to the house of Cornelius, he never preaches heaven to them. He starts preaching the gospel to them, and all of a sudden they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's at that moment that Peter knows, hey, I've got to baptize these guys because they've received the Holy Spirit just as we did. And and just it, it, we can go on and on. Now, there's no record of Paul preaching uh, a gospel of heaven to in any of the places that he preached. And uh, it's in, in his emphasis, again, is on the Holy Spirit and on Christ and the resurrection of Christ. So where, where do you think that preaching the gospel and promising heaven, where do you think that came from? This is a guess because I haven't researched it. But my assumption would be, and this is just an assumption, so don't go, you know, banking on this, but... I think with the development of Catholicism, there arose this power structure where suddenly the church had to defend itself. The church had to survive. And, and to do that, it, corruption, I think, came into the church on many, many different levels. And, and there was a lot of corruption, especially through what we call the Dark Ages and uh, and there was the selling of indulgences. And an indulgence is that you're basically buying your you're buying blessings, you're buying your way into heaven. Yeah. And 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 so I think that there probably was a, a refocusing during that time. Now God has always had a remnant. Yeah. Uh, even during that time. Um, and uh, there's uh, you know, there's some some great there's a great book on that a guy named John Kennedy wrote uh, the, the torture the testimony torture the testimony yeah. and that's about the underground church it's mm -hmm. about that remnant that I'm talking about but by and large mainstream Christianity did undergo uh, a lot of corruption uh, and in the Reformation I don't think pulled us completely out of that and so evangelicalism especially here in the U.S. And in the in in and in Europe was really focused on a, a gospel of heaven. How do I not go to hell? Mm -hmm. How do I go to heaven? And uh, and and it again, what it does is the danger in that is that it removes the the true promise of the gospel, which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, God Himself. Yeah. God Himself. That's yeah. the whole point. The promise yeah. of the gospel is not a condition. It's not a place. Mm -hmm. It's God. Yeah. God, the Holy Spirit. And so that's, I think, a, a very important point for us to make. And again, we're not denying heaven. Uh, you know, should the Lord tarry, I intend to be there one day, you know. Yeah. But, but it's, but, it's. I mean, it's significantly different, though, than, you know, trying to scare people into yeah, believing it, the gospel. And, my experience but, when I first heard the gospel and gave my life to Jesus was not the gospel of the kingdom. It was, it was the gospel of heaven. I was scared to go to hell. <laughs> yeah. right. I was terrified to go to hell and that's why I gave my life to the Lord. And I can tell you that my life, there was not a significant change in my, the patterns mm. of my life. It was more, oh, this is what I, what I'm supposed to do. And, and I think that's the point. I think the, 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 the main point of concern for me yeah. in, and Paul speaks, he spoke to the Galatians about preaching the wrong gospel. Yeah. Said if anybody comes to you with any other gospel other than that which we've preached to you, let him be a curse. And then he repeats it. And so we have to get this right, especially yeah. in these last days. Yeah. But my main concern is that I think our gospel of heaven, it can save you. Yeah. And I think many, many, many people have been saved by a gospel of heaven. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I want to be clear about that too. Yeah. But what kind of faith does it produce yeah. in those who believe it? who hear it and yeah. receive it. Yeah. 
And I think it, it tends to produce more of a, that self-centered yeah. consumeristic faith that's focused, you know, more on me mm-hmm. and okay, now I'm going to go to heaven. Now I'm saved. Yeah. Yeah. And well, that's for sure what it was like for me because there was no focus on wanting Jesus wanting, yeah. you know, to find God. It was, I just want to make sure that I have done what I need to do to make sure I get into heaven. <laughs> and then later on in life, there was like the, wow, I, I think I'm missing something. And that's when I, I, I discovered the Holy Spirit. Right. Is when I realized I need to know who he is. Right. You know, and that's what, what when things changed. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, when we think about it, and, we, and, 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 and just even for those who are listening, for us to study it out for yourself, go through the, the New Testament yeah. and look up every place where the gospel is being preached. And you'll see that what I'm saying is true. Yeah. That the promise of the gospel is always the Holy Spirit. Then in the promise of the gospel of heaven is heaven. Yeah. The promise of the gospel of the kingdom is the Holy Spirit. And what does that mean? That means that the kingdom of God is the life of the spirit in yeah, us. Yeah. And every and that came on the day of Pentecost because every every place before the day of Pentecost that the kingdom of God is proclaimed, it's proclaimed as being near. It's yeah. coming. Uh, it is not yet arrived. Every place that it is uh, alluded to after the day of Pentecost it's already arrived. It hmm. exists now yeah. as a reality. Which is really cool. So I think we I think we just need to, you know, study that out for ourselves and we need to change the language. I think the, the language of the gospel of heaven, the promise is heaven, and uh, the the promise of the gospel of the kingdom is the Holy Spirit. I think the entry focus in the gospel of heaven is believe. Yeah. And and that and, and and all of these things about the gospel of heaven are true, but they are not the ultimate truth because the entry focus in the gospel of the kingdom is repent. Hmm. And repentance is a work of the heart. Yeah. Without which faith cannot bear fruit. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, again, the confession in the gospel of heaven is that Jesus is my savior. The confession in uh, the gospel of the kingdom is that Jesus is my lord. Yeah. And I think uh, the goal in the gospel of, of heaven is salvation, whereas the goal in the, the, the gospel of the kingdom is a kingdom life, that you're living a life on the mission of the kingdom of God. Yeah. And I think the effect uh, with the gospel of heaven is, uh, again, this consumeristic faith, whereas the effect in the gospel of the kingdom is a, is a powerful kingdom life. And so all of these things, I think, are, are critical yeah. To producing the kind of life that is filled with and led by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be a life lived out on the mission of the kingdom of God. And so um, I, I know uh, the type of faith that you have is so important. Uh, that's the most important thing about you. There are many different kinds of faith spoken of in the New Testament. There's a faith that moves mountains and there's a faith that doesn't move mountains. Mm-hmm. There's a faith that walks on water, and there's a faith that doesn't walk on water. Uh, you know, there's good faith, there's weak faith. Uh, and so what kind of faith do we have? And I think the kind of gospel that we have believed in and that we've lived by mm. is really the key in developing the kind of faith that we have. And uh, I would challenge everyone to really examine their faith. Is it about you? Or is it about God himself? And I go back to my own salvation experience. I wasn't looking for anything from God. I wanted him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you can, for our listeners, you can comment on your thoughts on this topic. Um, And then just within that, you can just tell us, is this the first time you've heard the gospel presented in this way? You know, in the comments. Um, I guess I'm wondering, like, for, for you, Dad, where you started to study this out? Like, was this something that was always, that you've always kind of known all along? And I think it seems like it is to an extent, but in terms of the studying it out and knowing it, the way you you present it in the teaching. Yeah, I don't know the exact time frame, uh, but uh, I just came to, 
I just came to this awareness that some something was missing. Something yeah. was missing in most people's faith. Okay. That I couldn't understand yeah. because, uh, you know, and I'm not claiming to have the world's greatest faith by any stretch. Sure, yeah. But but when I'm encountering people and I'm listening to them, I'm listening to their prayers. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Listen to your prayers. That'll tell you the level of your faith. And I think I think it was kind of um I would I would go on a mission trip and I would see God do these powerful things. I would see many people coming to Christ, healings, deliverances, and then I would come back mm -hmm. and I would go to church mm -hmm. and I'd listen to the prayers of the people. And it was like it was a totally different world. Yeah, yeah. And and I so I began to search out why is that? What is the difference that's that that's here? That's yeah. And, um, and I, hmm. as I began to search that out, it just kind of led to this question of what is the gospel yeah. of the kingdom and what, what kind of faith would that produce? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and especially came out, uh, as I was developing this message on Kairos and Kronos, which I think is a very important one. We start every training with that message and it's a yeah. challenge to, to have prophetic faith, to have a, the faith of the early church fathers, a faith that that is not about me. It's not therapeutic. And uh, I, yeah. I, I want to see growth in people's lives. I want to see people filled with the Spirit. I want to see them walking and living out on the mission of the kingdom yeah. of God, making a difference in their families and in their communities and um and, and, and again, uh, I, I'm not questioning the salvation of those who have come to Christ through a gospel of heaven. Yeah. But, you know, my love for God is really only uh, as good and as great as my knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. And my knowledge of God is going to come from my faith. Hmm. And I, I, I look at the church today and I, I wonder, where's the awe? Mm-hmm. Where's this, the wonder and the, the astonishment, you know, mm -hmm. and Peter and John healing the man at the temple. And when the people saw that, they were filled with astonishment and awe. Yeah. And that's what our faith should produce. And, and I guess I'm not seeing that in the churches. And I, I long to see that. And I, I think just through the process of wondering about that, God just took me to the gospel that I am preaching mm -hmm. and caused me to examine it in light of the scriptures. And we should be examining the gospel, not in light of how everybody else is preaching it yeah. or whether they've been preaching it that way for hundreds of years. But we should be examining the gospel we preach in light of the scriptures. What do the scriptures say about yeah. it? I think, yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to like, the individual pursuing God, seeking after him, seeking after the truth, like unplugging from everything else, what everybody's telling them, whatever, whatever the world's kind of driving them to do. Um, and just seeking God, getting on your face before him, getting in the Bible and just seeking him. And God will, I don't know, for me, I, I feel like that's been, been huge, like significant for me in, in, lifting my faith in yeah. him just getting out climbing a mountain just spending time with him for hours on end just seeking him and yeah. looking for him trying to get away from everything um and it's and, not it's not about us like it's not about the individual it's about it's about like what you're talking about it's about finding him yeah you know and i think that that's where we get confused sometimes we make it we focus so much on ourselves so caught up in we get everything, so blinded yeah. by ourselves that we don't we don't really actually see him yeah, I again when I came to Christ, I, I didn't even know what salvation was. Yeah. I mean, again, I was a Catholic boy. You know, you're if you're a Catholic, you're going to go to purgatory, then you're going to go to heaven. You yeah. know, and uh, <laughs> it's a done deal unless you're really, really bad. You know, but <laughs> you can always go to confession, clean things up, and you know until you have to go yeah. back again. Yeah. But but for me, that's not what I was looking for. I, I was truly searching for God, and if you. If you seek him with all your heart, mm -hmm. he will reveal himself to you in a very powerful and life-changing way. Yeah. And uh, that's my encouragement to everyone that's listening is yeah. stop seeking the stuff hmm. and seek him. Yeah. He is the promise of the gospel. Yeah. yeah. And we've had 
pastors and leaders who have had their lives changed by this teaching, you know, I, I, I think that in many ways they were, you know, they were preaching the gospel of heaven when they heard this teaching. Not only did they preach the gospel of the kingdom, but they received the gospel of the kingdom, Yeah, you know, and their <laughs> lives were changed. And so we, I just know that this, it's been very significant uh, in the midst of the trainings that we do, uh, this teaching. So, yeah. Well, this has been, uh, I think, super helpful uh, for probably our listeners. I think that um, I know there's, we, there's a challenge, yeah. you know, that we have to, we've got to find them, you know. And if, if you take anything, I think, away from this episode, it's seek the Lord, you know, and, and yeah. find him. You know, don't stop until you find him, you know. You know, we, we rob people when we um, we cut short at, here, you're just going to go to heaven if you just believe the gospel. Yeah. If you don't. Yeah. yeah. And remember, he's the promise. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He's not promising you stuff. Yeah. He's the promise. Yeah. Yep. Well, thanks for taking the time to just sit down and, you know, talk about the gospel of the kingdom. Um, I really, I hope and pray that this is uh, influential, inspirational for people. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit would lead uh, our, you listeners to, again, find him where, where you are. Um, and, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, um, just please make sure you subscribe. And, uh, if you have any questions or even maybe a topic that you'd like us to discuss on our show, please leave us a comment as well. Um, and, uh, then I just want to, um, end with this quote, uh, from Jonathan Edwards. He said, the seeking of the kingdom of God is the chief business of the Christian life. Thanks for tuning in with us. If you want to know more about the Keystone Project and how you can support our ministry or launch disciple-making movements in the nations, go to keystoneproject.org or find us on all the major social media platforms.